name is Mary Landis. I'm the executive director of the temple. Our mission is to save this building and repurpose its spaces for our community. And including this theater you're in tonight, it was finished in 1927. The chairs you're sitting in are the original chairs. The backdrop's from uh, 1905. It's a collection that's very rare. Uh, and so we're working to save these spaces. Uh, we have uh, business spaces throughout the building, co-working. We have 24 startup businesses here in the building. And the spaces are also for meeting spaces and for events. Uh, we're in a capital campaign right now to save this building and give it what it needs for the future, including accessibility. And for all of you that walked up the stairs, we're raising money for the elevators. We're raising money to climate control this space, uh, to save the backdrops that are in this heat and humidity, uh, and to make this usable space all year round. Uh, and also to have ADA accessibility for bathrooms. So if anyone is interested in learning more or helping us, joining us, please visit our website at salinatemple.com. Thank you. Thank you, Mary, and uh, thank you so much for letting us use this beautiful space. A lot of people have been asking me how we can get it restored. Um, also, thanks to the Sling County Democratic Party. You may have walked across and seen their office downstairs a little bit ago. Uh, and also the Sling County Democratic Women for the ice cream bars. Uh, they are also from the Palateria Lenina ice cream shop out on West Cloud. Uh, thank you to Jersey Mullins for picking those up for us. And we have lots. So. Uh, thank you to Vicki and Scott Price for the voter registration that's going on out by the door. There's bottled water out there. Uh, there are restrooms around. Um, and maybe you can catch Mary if you can't find one. I know there's one just down this hall, back, back around there and down that hall. Um, so, and thank you, Janet Hansen, for videotaping this. Um, tonight's theme. We, we, we refuse to live in a country run by hate, fear, and chaos. We choose freedom. Generations worked hard for our right to vote, so let's use it. We have, on our to my left, um, our first panel of speakers, and tonight my, uh, my goal was to have everybody from a baby boomer to a Gen Z, and I'm not going to say who is who. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I'll say I'm a baby boomer, but anyway. Um, this is an intergenerational democracy that we're working toward. And I'm very happy to have um, the people that we have speaking tonight and the candidates who are running. On my uh, right is Paul Buskirk on the end. Mark, Mark Shokowicz, who is um, the head of the, the, the uh, Rooks County Dem Chair and also uh, CD1, which is the big first district. He's gonna tell you more about that the CD1 secretary. Can you hear me back there? Can you hear me now? Huh? Uh, let me turn it up. You mean, I don't know if it can be turned up or not. I can try to get really close, a lot closer. I'll try closer. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, next to Mark is John Baker, who's <laughs> right for the 24th seat of the Kansas, uh, legis Kansas, Kansas Senate, and he's running against Jeremy Ryan Clays. Uh, next to him is Lori Blake. <laughs> Lori is running against Clark Sanders in the 69th House District. We're very happy to have this slate of Democratic candidates. <laughs> I'm going to introduce each one of these speakers a little separate, so let's just get started. Um, uh, I don't, I've made notes ever since the, the convention of things I might want to say tonight, but I saw Michael Eric Dyson on Lawrence O'Donnell not too long ago. I really love Michael Eric Dyson. And he quoted Grace Jones. I don't know who that is. He quoted Grace Jones, who said, I may not be perfect, but I'm perfect for you. <laughs> So that's how we see our democratic process and our democratic party in this uh, Saline County. We want to build it and grow it, and we're looking to all, for all of you to help. Um, I'm also inspired by 93-year-old Bert Holmes, 
who put up billboards in Oklahoma encouraging people to vote Democrat. When the media told him he was going against the grain, 93-year-old Burt said, he, rep he replied, I don't care about the grain. Uh, he is a role model for all of us. And the sign said, the billboard in Oklahoma, I think it was Tulsa, women, the Republican Party doesn't respect you, vote Democrat. So that's good. Um, the party has been working hard in the last, ever since uh, uh, Joe Biden uh, withdrew and Kamala Harris was, the, was our nominee to organize, mobilize, and perfect democracy. And I always love to quote a Republican. So I'm going to quote Tara Setmeyer. You can tell I watch the MSNBC a lot, but anyway. We will save this democracy. Women and men who love women will be at the helm. So that is uh, sort of my little pep talk. Now, Sandy Beverly is our first speaker tonight. Uh, you're invited to join the Democrats in moving forward to a be uh, better future for all of us. Women don't need Donald Trump to protect us. We need to protect ourselves, our kids, and our country from him. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> like Kamala, Sandy Beverly continues to put the bullies in their place, and she's been doing that for a long time in Salina. <clears throat> Sandy is a longtime community activist, vice chair of the Saline County Dems. She's been involved in the NAACP for a long time, Salina Human Relations Commission, and the Dana Adams Project. Sandy Beverly, please welcome my friend, Sandy Beverly. Hi, how's everybody this evening? Stand in your truth. Let's Are you ready to make sure that this country does not go backwards? Yeah. Are you ready to make sure that our children receive an education and not discrimination? Yeah. Are you ready to make sure that we quit putting people in prison instead of rehabilitating them? Yeah. Let me tell you, we cannot build enough jails to put all the people in that we're not going to educate. And that's what this country continues to do. Absolutely. I am part of the Dana Adams Project because we discovered that there was a lynching in Salina, Kansas. Did you know that? Okay. There are very few people that knew that. I graduated from high school here and never heard that story. And that came about because a friend of mine, Reverend Martha Murchison, had gone to the Equal Justice Initiative Museum. And she, being from South Carolina, figured that she'd find a point on there someplace that people had been lynched in South Carolina, right? What she didn't expect was for a pen in the middle of that map, in the middle of Kansas, that indicated there had been a lynching in Salina, Kansas. Now, I noticed back here that there are words on this banner. And one of them is equity and justice. Those are the two I'm going to speak about because purity I really don't care about because everybody has their own definition about that. <laughs> The person that was lynched in this county did not receive justice. He did not receive equity because he was viewed as being less than human. No, I will not shut up. I've been loud all my life, and at almost 70 years old, I intend to get louder. I want you to understand that we are all in this together, that we have something to fight for. This is our country. I don't need Donald Trump to protect me. I don't need Donald Trump to speak for me. I don't even like saying that man's name because what he has done to this country is absolutely sickening. It is. I am very proud of these people over here that are running. to people to come here because I want you to realize that voting is an active activity. It is not something that you sit back and watch go by. Because if you don't stand up and speak for yourself, the person that's speaking for you and doesn't care for you is going to screw over you. And that's what we're facing right now. Okay? So all of you out here, get to know these people. Get to find out what their ideas are. 
Find out what they believe in. Find out where they stand. And for God's sake, engage our young people. I'm one of the boomers up here. There's going to be a protest here next week. I don't know how many of you knew this, but there will be a protest here next week. Because there are young Democrats who are upset about the fact that we are involved in wars that we probably shouldn't be involved in. And just because I say that I'm pro-Palestinian does not mean I'm anti-Semite. No way am I that. But we have got to get some kind of a handle on killing people. This is insane. We have got to do something about our bombs and the bombs that we're dropping, that we're giving people to drop, because it's not right. We've got to quit talking about prayers and condolences when we talk about school shootings. My grandson was just at Central High School's homecoming this weekend. Did you know we had a gun threat since that night, Saturday night? This is in Salina, Kansas. Everybody thinks it doesn't happen here. I am a medi mediator here in the city of Salina. I mediate first-time juvenile offenders when they get in trouble. Two years ago, I mediated a case where a kid sat up in the classroom and talked about how if he wanted to blow up his school, and he had this all figured out, down to the minute detail. And he sat in class and bragged about it, and then got upset because he got in trouble about it. This is not something to joke about. This is serious. If you remember Timothy McVeigh when they blew up that building in Oklahoma, this is not a joke. Right. If you remember the Twin Towers, this is not a joke. If you remember Sandy Hook, this is not a joke. The crap that happened in Uvalde, that was not a joke. And I'm not anti-gun, I'm anti-idiots with guns. So what I'm asking you tonight is, stand in your truth. Fight for equality, fight for justice. George Floyd should have never died on this street for being a black man. It should have never happened. Breonna Taylor should have never died in her apartment being shot in her sleep. It should have never happened. We have to make people accountable for their actions. And you know what? It starts on the local level. If you don't care about what happens in your local government, you're stupid. Because you've got to start from the ground up. It happens in the city, it happens in the county, it happens at the state, and sometimes it might reach the federal government, but it starts right here. And this is where the battleground is. I love you. I hope to see you all in this war. I hope to see us all stand for truth. I hope to see us all fight for justice. I hope for us to never deny a woman their right to do what they want to and need to with their own personal body. And just as an afterthought, I just finished telling Braden that I was going to get to see my young son come home this next month. Or this, yeah, no, October. This is still September. He's coming home next month. I haven't seen Carl in over a year. My baby boy sings opera. He's a wonderful human being. He has a wicked sense of humor. And he's gay. And I don't want to live in a world where his life is threatened because somebody has a problem with who he's gay. Stand for yourself, stand for those people you love. You don't have to always understand what's going on, but you can, you can dog down figure out what's right and what's wrong. My grandmother had a saying, what's right is right, and right don't wrong nobody. There is righteousness out here. We just have to be willing to fight for it. Thank you. You can see why she's our leadoff. <laughs> but when I think of our next guest, I think of what's become of the Harris Walls mantra. We won't be sent back, pushed back, kicked back, bullied back. We're not going back. Kamala Harris's mother's quote rings true today. Fight systems in a way that causes them to be fair and don't be limited by what has always been. 
Please help me welcome my new friend, Dr. Taryn Gilbert Howard. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me all right? I'm now generally speaking, so I'm sure it's fine. Um, Okay. Um, my name is Dr. Taryn Gilbert Howard. I am a college professor here in Salina. Um, I've lived in Kansas nearly my entire life. Uh, and unlike Roger Marshall, I don't pretend to live in Kansas while actually living in the Sarasota region. So that's easy there. I am 36 years old, um, which sometimes I pretend I'm not. Um, I am a proud childless cat lady, um, two cats, uh, and I am trying to become a one child cat lady at the moment, um, and I'm really excited to speak with all of you today in support of Kamala Harris and Tampon Tim Walls, and I say that as a compliment because only Republicans see that as an insult. I love uh, free menstrual products for everyone. Um, and as well as the down ballot candidates and representatives in Kansas. So as a woman, I will just tell you, I am beside myself about the prospect of the first female president being elected in November. Like, so exciting. I look so forward to voting for a woman president for the second time. Uh, and I'm probably most excited uh, about electing a black and Indian woman to the highest office. Um, empowering and emboldening young women across America and young girls across America. And so that's really exciting. So, I've already said this, but people who know me know I am very loud and I am very outspoken. And people who don't know me spend five minutes with me and they recognize I am very loud and very <laughs> outspoken. Uh, as Janice knew very quickly and to, to meeting her. And I do not apologize for it. And I have not apologized for it for a very long time. Um, I've never been a person who turns on a different version of myself depending on where I am or who I'm with. And I try to always speak truth to power. Um, I will be honest. It's not always, it does not always feel good to do these things. Uh, and it does not always come without punishment. Uh, especially by those who preserve their own unchecked abuse, power, and privilege. But um, it's important for those who can speak to know when to listen and to know when to speak up for those who can't. And I, I feel very strongly about that. Um, I also must say that I recognize I'm afforded this freedom because of my white privilege, because of the color of my skin, and because of my economic status much of the time. As a young white woman, I truly believe acknowledging uh, white privilege is necessary, especially our own implicit bias. I don't think we should be judging others without judging ourselves. Um, I also recognize that talking about whiteness as a white person and to other white people can be very uncomfortable. Uh, I don't think acknowledgement is a sufficient step, though, without initiative and action. Oh. Uh, it's on us to speak to our family, friends, and neighbors about how dangerous another Trump presidency is going to be for all Americans. Frankly, I am so, 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 so very sick of toxic and misogynistic men being in positions of power. Yeah. Uh, this, though, is our chance to stand up and fight back. Uh, it's on us to reclaim bodily autonomy, uh, demand our national and state politicians meaningfully start to take action on issues like gun control, uh, public education, public education, I'm going to say that again, uh, immigration reform, affordable health care and housing, and issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion, which are becoming these taboo words that like blow my mind that we cannot acknowledge how important they are in our world. Uh, I encourage my students as a teacher to be informed citizens and, citizens and voters as an English professor, the best kind, especially because I know there's a few historians in here. Uh, I have to poke fun at my friends. Um, I model digital literacy in my classroom and especially because so many of my Gen Z students get their news online. Um, and I will tell you, 
Gen Z, stop being rude to them. They are a wonderful population of people. Um, I love these young people. They, yes, they have so many beautiful things about them. A few of my favorite qualities are the way that they boldly and unapologetically talk about mental health. I think it's so important and so beautiful. Um, they insist on a work-life balance, and I love that for them. Um, and they care deeply about social and environmental issues. Uh, many of my students come from conservative backgrounds and continually uh, higher ed and education generally is being accused of indoctrinating students with liberal ideologies. Uh, and I tell my students that college is not about changing their minds, but rather opening their minds to individuals, experiences, and knowledge that they may not have grown up with. Um, this is something beautiful that happened for me when I went to college, and this is something that I try to pass on to my students. I continually engage uh, my students in humanizing ways in hopes that, like Kamala Harris says, they don't believe they just fell out of the coconut tree. Um, we all live in the context of the world and what came before us, and in order to see America become uh, a better version of herself, uh, we must vote not only for our interests, but of the interests of people who don't necessarily look like and live like us. I am pleading with everyone in this room to give and speak out as you are able and as is safe for you and you are comfortable um, over the next month to help Kamala Harris, Tim Walls, and our local and state politicians uh, get elected in order to, to nurture and to grow a democratic vision for all Americans um, because we keep going back and we just can't go back, right? We need to move forward. So, thank you. Thank you, Taryn. Um, our next speaker is Don Dr. Brandon Cheeks. He's elementary, or Sunset Elementary School principal, associate pastor at St. John's Missionary Baptist Church. He and his wife, Dr. Lolita Cheeks, a school counselor, are parents of, to six children, and they are all, they're both dedicated to public education. Please help me welcome Dr. Brandon Cheeks. Thank you for the introduction. I'm here just to speak on behalf of myself and my family. In the Word of God, it says in James 1, 19, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, Get rid of all more fit, filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word, or so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word does not do what it says. It, it's like someone who looks at, the, at his face in the mirror. And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forget what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continuously in it does not forget it, what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. I want you to know that I am a Democrat and I am a Christian, despite what some people may say. I can believe in the Word of God, I can be a hearer, and I can be a doer of the Word of God, and I can stand and I can vote for what I think is right. If you are American, you have the right to vote. You have the right to vote in the way that you want to vote, looking at the, the different agendas of the different politicians, and you vote for what you feel is right. And I believe that the people to my right are going to stand up against what's wrong they're going to support public education. They're going to support education. They're going to fully fund Solana Public Schools, which we need. We need funding. 
We want safety and security, then guess what? We need funding for those things. If you don't want to vote for education, I'm asking you to vote for my wife, for my mother, for my grandmother, and for my five little girls at home. They have a right to choose, just like you have a right to choose. I have a right to decide what I want to do for my own body. And guess what? Can't nobody tell me what to do with my body. I am here to tell you, you can't even tell me to take a flu shot. If I don't want to take a flu shot, I'm not going to take a flu shot. Although I get persuaded by my wife and my mama to take my flu shot, but guess what? I get the opportunity to make a decision if I want to do that to my body. So why would you vote for somebody that wants to take that right away from your mother, your grandmother, your little girls, your nieces? Why would you vote for somebody that wouldn't support that? I'm here to ask you to get out and vote. I look back and I look at my ancestors that fought hard to get the opportunity to vote. And I am going to make sure that I get out the vote and I'm going to encourage everyone I see, we have to vote. We have to vote. Now I'm sorry, I would have been a lot more prepared, but I got a call last night about this time. So I'm going to end by saying we must move forward. When I looked up what moving forward means, it says a sense of progress and proactive advancing. Advancement, focusing on the steps taken to overcome obstacles or to improve a situation. I want to vote for some people that's gonna look at those obstacles and they're gonna figure out a way to move forward. They're not gonna come up and read Project 25 or whatever project that comes up that the donors and people that's gonna fund them with the best, biggest bucks and money, they're gonna stand up for the people and what we need in our community. We need to vote. We need to vote for people that's gonna support us, that's gonna support our kids, that's gonna support our grandkids. We need to vote. I'm asking you to get out and vote and vote for what's right. Vote blue, vote for the Democrats. We need to vote. respect are all on the ballot in 2024. The message, choose common sense over nonsense. And my new friend Sherilyn Wagner exemplifies those values. Please help me welcome Sherilyn Wagner.
junior attended, and they were in the same class. Um, he hasn't changed much. My husband has. He's not. Um, yeah. He could tell you a few stories. I returned to Kansas and went to work for Hallmark Cards and Management for 10 years. And then my husband decided that he'd had enough of the law. And, and I should mention that I think I have a really good breach of contract suit because when I met him, he was going to be an attorney and a gentleman farmer. And so, yeah, we may, we may have to litigate that soon. Um, anyway, I raised my family, and then I owned and operated a small business at the Linger Longer Soda Fountain in Bennington, Kansas. Until COVID got the best of me. And um, now I am speaking before you. Um, I wanted to tell you that these are the reasons, these are, these are the experiences that led me to the conclusion that character matters. It's the most important thing about another person. And if um, everyone makes, well, everyone makes mistakes. And I won't always agree with what you say or what another politician says, but if someone has character, then I can count on them to generally make a decision that is in my best interest, the best interest of my children, my family, my country. I believe you should be in politics to give back, not to get ahead. I believe that you should be the solution and not the problem. Um, I've never voted party lines before. I've always voted for the issues or the character or the, of the politician. But this year, I encourage all of you to vote Democratic Party line because Kamala and others need your support. I think the best way to reach the undecided and the Trump supporters is through personal contact. And this is really hard to do. I, I did it today. Um, you need to raise issues that are important to you and talk to your neighbors and your friends. Even though it's uncomfortable, I encourage you to do that. Um, I think it's the only way that we're going to change opinion. And don't argue, listen. And ask questions. Um, you could say things like, well, how will this impact your daughter or your granddaughter? And are you comfortable with the things Donald Trump has said and with him having his finger on the red button? Because I'm not. This election is too important to worry about whether you're pissing somebody off or not. You need to stand tall and say what needs to be said. Um, I recently sent out a postcard. Um, and this postcard said, character matters. That's the most important issue in the upcoming election. I want a president who is honorable, one who will put our country before themselves and special interest groups. Kamala Harris is that candidate. I'm tired of chaos, drama, and strife. I'm tired of lies, racism, sexism, and famed Christianity. I'm tired of tax breaks for the rich, heroes being dissed, someone who pals with dictators and believes them instead of our military experts. I choose democracy. I choose to move forward. I choose hope, civility, and cooperation. I choose to love who I want, to make my own healthcare decisions, to protect my environment, to read what I want, and to be treated as an equal, regardless of my sex, race, or orientation. So this is why I'm no longer a Republican. Um, it's also why, between now and November 2nd, I will be wearing the same four shirts. Um, this is my work.
Um, now I'm going to present Raven Gonzalez, and he probably doesn't need any real introduction. He was he represented us very well at the DNC. Right? He is the office manager of the Salt City County Dems office downstairs, and he is reviving or starting or something the uh, Young Democrats of Saline County. Raymond Gonzalez. Good evening, good evening. It is an honor to stand before you this evening reflecting on my incredible experience at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago, Illinois. The energy was electric. The camaraderie, the palpable vision that we see, and the vision for our future is clearer than ever. As I walked through the bustling halls of the McCormick Center through my hotel, I felt an overwhelming sense of optimism and purpose. This convention wasn't just a gathering of party leaders or seasoned politicians. It was a celebration of a collective strength led by passionate voices of young Democrats from all over this country. I was inspired by the many of our states and territories are now being led by young people, individuals who understand the challenges we face and are ready to tackle them head on. From city councils to state legislatures, young leaders are stepping up, bringing a fresh idea and initiative solutions to the table. They are not waiting for the change, they are the change. At the heart of this movement, it is our incredible ticket Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. Kamala, thank you. I struggle a bit. I'm, I'm learning. The enthusiasm for their vision was palpable throughout the convention. Kamala Harris, with her commitment to justice, and like what Mrs. Uh, Sandy Beverly said, equity and opportunity embodies the values we hold dear. And Tim Walls, a dedicated teacher and a leader and coach, whoop whoop for coach, with a deep understanding of what the needs of working families inspires us to believe in a government that works for not just me, myself as a young person, but for everyone. Young Democrats in this state and here in Salina are fired up. We recognize the stakes of this election. We understand that the future we want one where everyone has access to quality education, affordable health care, and a sustainable environment. It is within our grasp. We feel it. We feel it so closely near. We are determined to ensure that Kamala and Tim have the support they need to lead us forward to that future. As we strategize and mobilize in the coming months, well, coming months, let us remember that our voices matter. Young people matter. People like John and I's voices matter. Together, we can turn our passions into action and make history together. So let's hit the ground running. Let us show the world just how powerful us young people here in the United States and in Kansas, we can be. We can unite for our common cause. Let's work tirelessly to elect the first female president of the United States of America. Thank you, Ray. Now, we're going to turn to the local um, races. We've been talking about you a little bit, but while you've been sitting here, um, I like this slogan that says, Democrats who stay home elect Republicans. So be sure to tell all your friends that. Um, and Republicans harm Kansas families. Jeremy Clay's and Clark Sanders' votes hurt women and children. Lori Blake and John Baker are running against them. Please love them. Welcome, Lori Blake, who is giving Clark Sanders a run for his money to serve on us in the Kansas 69th House District. Uh, so, oh, up until
until April, I was an unaffiliated registered voter. And I just want to say to all of you Democrats, thank you for welcoming me home. I got affiliated 13 years ago because in my service as a local school board member, I was not proud of what was happening on either side of the aisle in Topeka. There is not unity in our state house. There's bickering that's taking place. And what I saw at our school board table was the ability to solve problems across diverse perspectives with respect and unity. And when we walked away from the table, it didn't matter if it was a 4-3 vote or a 7-0 vote, the board made a decision together and we supported that decision because what we were doing is what we believed was best for the students in our school district. I'm very pleased and very proud to have had the opportunity for 13 years to serve in that capacity. Um, eight of those years I got to serve on the Kansas Association of School Boards Board of Directors. And I got to travel across this amazing state and see public educators who make personal sacrifices every single day so that our students had an opportunity to have the very best possible education. <laughs> Dr. Cheeks and his wife are great friends of mine, and I am so proud and so happy that you're here this evening. He is in that work every single day. I've been knocking doors since the middle of July. I'm really happy the temperature is starting to come down because yeah. it's been hot. <laughs> it's been real hot. But at the doors, what I've been real happy to see is that when I approach a door with a Trump sign, when I ask the question, what is important to you in this state, it automatically dispels any kind of animosity, any kind of hatred, any kind of ugliness. We've had real conversations at the doors with not only Democrats, but also unaffiliated voters and registered Republicans. And people are tired, they're tired of Donald Trump. They are. Even people who have Trump flags hanging at their houses over the last eight years are tired of the division that's taking place in this country. And I'm running, not because I really want to. <laughs> it's true. I'll do the work. But I feel like it's a calling. Every job that I've ever had has had interaction with some kind of um, state government. When I worked for the school district, I first got to learn about the budgets and what that looks like with our taxpayer dollars. I got to live the reality of what happens when school board members do not have enough dollars to spread across the district. And the program that I loved and worked hard in for four years was eliminated. That was two months after my middle child was born. I'd just gotten back from maternity leave, and they said, we're really sorry, you've done great work, but we're eliminating your program. The very next day, I got a phone call from Dawn Merriman, who was the founder of Choices Network, and she says, Lori, I don't know you. I don't know anything about you. I know your parents from the Democrat Party. I know your husband because we buy pizza from him because we're renovating our, our uh, business on the main street of Assyria, Kansas, where we live and where we've raised our kids. And we think maybe you might be a fit for our organization, which is the Disability Supports Organization. Uh, would you want to come interview? And so I did. And that started 11 years of working with some of the most incredible people that I've ever met. Um, parents and family members of individuals with disabilities sac make sacrifices every single day, and they are funded primarily through Medicaid. There is currently a waiting list for those services, which is on the Intellectual Developmental Disability Waiver. 8,000 people, it's about an 8 to 10 year wait to get the services that they need. So the investment that could be made into Medicaid can help those families. It also can help them get back to work. Many, many, many parents and siblings and aunts and uncles and caregivers have walked away from careers to make sure that their children and their loved ones are cared for. If we provide the supports that individuals with disabilities need, it helps us all. So for 11 years I got to do that work and then I got a phone call from my good friend Vicki Price. And Vicki said, Lori, you worked for us before at CAPS and Carolee Jones just announced that she's retiring. And I don't know, but I've gotten this little antenna thing again happening. We think uh, maybe you should come interview for that position. And so I applied, and I just spent nine years of the most amazing work with an incredible team of children advocates um, working at Child Advocacy and Parenting Services. Um, during that time, we received funding from five different state um, 
organizations and, and state departments. So your tax dollars are impacting local nonprofit work also. Uh, my husband and I are business owners in this area. I just think that the exposure that I've had to state government is a lens that not many people have. And I'm not doing this for me. I tell people at the door, they say, wow, we've never had a politician on your door. And I, and I said to them, well, I'm not a politician. I want to be your representative, and that's truth. I want to represent this community because I want it to be a place we can all be proud of. I want it to be a place where everyone has a voice and that we don't worry about speaking our truth, like Sandy said, but that we own our truth and that we can have conversations with people who disagree with us. Because there's not one person on this planet, even the guy I sleep with every night, who's a Republican, <laughs> that agrees with every single thing that we have um, in common. It's just not going to happen. So we've got to figure out how to get back to that civil discourse and listening to one another. And I believe that that is my call. I've been working really hard, and I hope that I will earn your vote if you live in the 69th district. Um, my motivation day came last March when Clark Sanders told a group of early childhood educators that we don't have a child care crisis in our world. How many of your parents? Do you know what he told me? We have a family issue, a family values crisis in our world, and women should just stay home and raise their children. Now, if that's your choice, I have no problem with that. But for a man to tell me that that is what I need to do, that is not okay. So that was one of the things that happened. Um, two years ago, as I sat on the couch and I watched the vote no amendment, that, that we did that in Kansas, She and I looked at each other in total disbelief that this was happening. And it gave me hope to know that this is a place that shocks the world. It's a place that when women show up, not that we don't need men, but when women show up and use our voice and use our brains and vote the way it matters, good things can happen. So tell your friends, tell your children, tell your parents, get to the polls, and we can do this. Because John Baker and I have very similar beliefs in a lot of things, and we've been spending a lot of time together. So I'm very happy to introduce to you your next senator for the state of Kansas in the 24th district. Lori, thank you. You really have become one of my best friends like over these last few months. Campaigning is not Sorry, there we go. I can hear myself now too, that was my bad. <laughs> Campaigning is not easy. Lori has been putting in so much work. We're out there knocking doors. It is hot as hell, and we're having amazing conversations, but oftentimes difficult conversations with our community members. So thank you, Lori, for everything that you are doing. <laughs> And also thank you to Paul Buskirk for being here. Lori's <laughs> running for the 69 tax season. I, I don't know how many people are in your district, but I know in the Senate District 24, there are approximately 70,000 people. It is so much work. And Paul is covering the entirety of Northwest Kansas. It is a substantial burden. And so thank you so much for being here in Salina, Kansas, and uh, being here with the Democratic Party and the members of our community. And also, uh, before I forget, I just want to make a note here. Janice, can you write this down? Sandy doesn't get to speak until the end because I feel ridiculous. <laughs> I, feel ridiculous. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to do with myself now. It was amazing and passionate. And everybody else up here on the panel as well. So please, everybody, just give me a minute. And, and also, this, uh, it is overwhelming right now being in this historic building in this facility. Like, I could not imagine myself, like, years ago, standing before you giving a speech with such amazing people and doing such amazing work. So thank you to Mary and to thank you to the temple as well. <laughs> so, I don't really know where to begin, so I'll start from the very beginning. My name is John Baker. 
I was born and raised here in Salina, Kansas. I went to El Saline Elementary School, formerly Happy Corner, went to South Middle School here in town, graduated from Salina South High School in 2010, went off to college at KU, had no idea what I was doing, and decided to take a little break, moved to Hawaii where I worked for the Legal Aid Society of Hawaii, decided to move back to Kansas to be closer to family, finished my undergrad at Fort Hay State University. Did my mic just fail? No. I've worked quite a few different jobs. Um, I've been in construction. I've done commercial flooring. I know what it's like to do backbreaking work. I've been a server. I've bussed tables. And then I decided to go to law school. And I graduated in 2022. My first, my first job out of law school and um, an organization that I still do work with is Kansas Holistic Defenders. It is a nonprofit public defense firm based in Douglas County, Kansas, and we represent um, indigent individuals. It's an amazing organization, not just because we help people with their immediate criminal case, but we operate under the holistic model, uh, which means that we provide services beyond legal representation. There are so many days that I'll never forget where I was going to the clothing bank and the food bank to get resources for people that we represented. It is an extremely amazing organization and very, very meaningful work. Um, one of the questions that I get the most on this campaign trail is, why am I doing this? And I love to say that it's because I'm an insane person. Like Lori said, I don't think anybody really wants to do this. If you do, you probably are a little bit crazy. But for me, as I've thought about this so much since I filed in May, it, it, it's a very complicated answer, but what I've reduced it down to is that I care a lot about people. But it all started when I was in law school. I got very, very angry. I was in law school at the height of the pandemic. Classes went completely remote. Law school is hard in and of itself, but I think it's even more difficult in a pandemic. Like, everybody's lives was exponentially harder during that time. It was also during my second semester of my 1L year that the entire world saw George Floyd murdered live. It, I, it broke a part of me. I lost so much trust in our public institutions. I fell into like some sort of apathy because I didn't believe that anything that I could do actually mattered. But that wasn't the case I learned very quickly. It was in that moment of apathy and despair, really, that I met an amazing group of organizers in Topeka, Kansas. I joined Black Lives Matter. I attended to start a chapter of the National Lawyers Guild. And I realized that the answer to all of our problems in our communities isn't to sit back and do nothing. It's to engage yourself even more. It's to get out and talk to people, to talk to your family, and to talk to your neighbors. These are really, really hard conversations, but that's how we build power. And that's how we organize against people like Republicans in the state, at the state level, and at the national level who don't believe what we do. I like to think that Democrats and everybody in this room wants what's best, not just for themselves, but for their community members because we realize that we are all interconnected. This doesn't work unless we all work together and we care about each other. And I'm not convinced that Republicans even give a shit. They don't. They do not want what's best for you. If Project 325 is allowed to proceed, I may gain some rights as a white man. Like, I, it might be good for me, but it's not gonna be good for my wife. It's not going to be good for my mother. It's not going to be good for my cousins or any woman in this room. And we have to do something to stop it. So if there's anything that I leave you with here today, I want to encourage you to have those hard conversations with everybody around you. I want to encourage you to go beyond just voting. Because voting is the bare minimum. It is extremely important. But it needs to happen. We need to do things outside of the election itself. When it's not a general election year, we need to be out in our communities and caring for one another and continuing these conversations. Because if we wait till the last minute, 
that's how we lose. But I don't think we're gonna win this time. The energy in this room is amazing. The energy behind, behind Harrison Walls is amazing. And I think we have a chance. And we can do it if we do it together. Thank you. Thank you all so, so much. Um, I'm going to turn this mic now over to Mark Shokowicz, who is the Rooks County Dem Chair and part Vice Chair of the newly formed CD1 Executive Committee, and he will introduce Paul Busker. Thank you, Kent. Thank you, Salina and Saline County Democrats, for hosting our events. Uh, we're in the temple, um, and this is an older building. We're on a theater, we're on a stage. Places like this were held for gatherings, for community, to build citizenship from the very beginning. You can go all the way back to ancient Greek democracy. And it's kind of odd because I've been in a lot of these places lately. Uh, when I was 15 years old, I started uh, some work with the Liberty Group, and we started gutting some buildings in downtown Hayes that's now known as the Bricks. My uncle, who's 94 years old, actually worked out of Gell's Brewery when it was a car shop back in the day. Yeah, I know. I can tell you a bunch of stories about all those places, but what's most interesting is that they're all public places in one way, shape, or form, or another. And in all those public places, what you find is community and people who love and care about each other. If they couldn't chip in money to help revitalize those places, they were helping chip in public support to help revitalize those places. Now you can go down to where I live, downtown Plainville, Kansas, and you can see a different scene. That place is only 1,600 people now. The two nicest places that were there are the ruins or the remains of a company that my uncle once owned. And unfortunately it fell apart, partly due to COVID, partly because of the 2008 crisis. But you know what? We still use those buildings as inspiration to revitalize our downtown. And we still engage in the public process to get the funding to be able to do that. And that's what being a Democrat is being all about. It's about engaging your community. It's about engaging and keeping the places that gather your community together open and available. And it means engaging with your community and backing them up when they're facing a bully, especially when that bully's in public. And that's what you all do as Democrats by being here right now. We know we're outnumbered in the 1st Congressional District. The 1st Congressional District is the largest Congressional District in the entire United States. It composes 59 counties. It is nearly impossible to traverse. And yeah, we might be outnumbered, but our values are in this room. They are in this building. They are all the faces I see in this audience right now. And we might not always agree with one another, but in our party, that's an asset. That is what we do to figure out what the best thing is to go forward, and that's what pushes us and gives us motivation to support us down the line. being in public, unlike some other people that I know. They want to shut down public spaces. They want to shut down the debate. They want to exclude certain people from that debate and prioritize others. And that's just not acceptable. It's not acceptable in rural spaces where we have people who are working their butts off trying to keep their public spaces open and trying to make a living. 
It's not acceptable when we have a farm bill that prioritizes large corporations at the expense of other people. Which is why we can face Tracy May. That's why we have a great candidate who's going to keep, to keep the debate going, who's going to fight for a good farm bill, is also going to fight for all of us, not just a few of us. And that's why today I have the privilege of introducing Paul Busner. Thank you all for taking time in your busy schedules to be with us tonight. Thank you to Janice. Thanks to everybody on, on stage. This is the most unique setting I have ever experienced in a member bill as well. Thank you for being part of that. So I'd like to share a few things with you in our time together this evening. I'd like to share a little bit about who I am, why I'm running. I'd like to share a little bit about perspectives on my opponent, Mark Deschert. And then I'd like to talk and close out talking a little bit about us. A little bit about who I am. So I grew up in small town Nebraska, Holdridge. It's a farm community. Uh, Dad was a preacher. Mom was a teacher. My sister became a nurse. My brother became a doctor. And me, I'm the outlier. I'm the different type of educator. For the last 40 years, I've worked with high school students, helping them to reach college, working with college students, helping them finish their degrees and go on to begin their careers. I grew up very much in a family and an upbringing that embraced service, just as many of you did the same. Service. Why am I running? I look at Washington today, and I choose to believe, I choose to believe because I was raised that way by my parents, choose to believe that our elected and appointed officials, when they began their careers, also believed in serving others. I choose to believe that. But I observe Washington today, and I look at these same representatives, and something has changed. Something has changed. It seems that they spend most of their time fussing and bickering with one another, pointing fingers, laying blame, and rarely taking accountability. Somewhere in that journey, they seem to have lost their sense of service, of what government means. Government is here to serve the people that sent the representatives in the first place. Every election is about choices. This one might be more important than some. My opponent is Tracy Mann. I have met Mr. Mann on a few occasions. I believe he is a good person. I believe he is a good family man. I believe he adores puppies and kittens, just like we adore puppies and kittens. I'm not challenging Mr. Mann on his character, but I am challenging Mr. Mann on his choices. It's easy to say, well, we're always different. <clears throat> That's not really true. Mr. Mann and I could probably stand side by side and find some things within the first district because there are an abundance of needs within our first district. And you know this. Where we would find issues, we would agree. And we would. But I was asked the question this afternoon, what differs you from one another? Because we need to know. Because it is about choices involved. Choices that you must be educated on and that you exercise. There are at least three areas where Mr. Mann and I are completely opposed. The first is I very much support U.S. sending money and arms to Ukraine, and this is why. <laughs> Ukraine is fighting for its very freedom against the tyranny of Russia. There are currently soldiers who are stationed in Fort Riley just down the road, who are currently assigned to Europe and help with the supply chain management and getting those weapons to the Ukrainians. And how could Mr. Mann, who voted against that back in April, stare at any retired current service member and say, I'm representing you? <laughs> Second is immigration. Mr. Mann is an avowed disciple of Donald Trump, and he would say so. Therefore, he supports Donald Trump's horrendous plan on immigration and deportation. 
Mr. Trump has indicated that should he regain office on his first day in the White House, he will immediately mobilize the Immigration and Customs Enforcement, the police, and we will identify, we will arrest, and he will deport every single undocumented resident in our country. That's tens of millions of individuals. Just in Kansas alone, the official estimate is that we have 62,000 undocumented residents in our state. That's the official number, which means the real number could be double that. Not only would this action unconscionably rip families apart, but the economic impact on our state, and especially the southwest part of our state, reaching to Saline County would be irreparable. Numbers that begin to look like recessions could suddenly turn into depression era. We are opposed. And the third, Mr. Mann could, if he could, if he could, immediately enact a total and complete ban, ban on abortion in our country. A ban that would have no exceptions. I would protect the freedom of all human beings to manage their own health care and reproductive rights without government interference. So as we start to close out tonight, I'd like to be able to have us talk about ourselves for just a minute. This is a very special night to me, and I appreciate that. We are in the currents of history right now, and that's very difficult when we're in a moment because we have no perspective. But we together are in a river of history involved. Who in this room could have predicted three years ago tonight, September 30th, 2021, who amongst us would have predicted that since that day, first, that the Kansas legislature would have the guts to be able to put an amendment that would ban abortion in our state. And they did. Who would have predicted that the U.S. Supreme Court would have had the guts to be able to overturn Roe? And they did. And who among us would have predicted that the Kansas response to these heinous decisions would have been on August 2nd of 2022 to be able to say to the world, no. Listen, we said no, we will not go back. The world and the country has been watching Kansas ever since. It's, we've been talked about in debates and on national media. We are still alive and well and working hard. There's 36 days to Election Tuesday. 36 days. 36 days full of opportunity. 36 days of knocking on doors where the temperatures are much better. 36 days of making phone calls, 36 days of writing postcards, 36 days of writing checks. <laughs> and for some of us, it's 36 days full of anxiety and fear because we don't know. We don't know, and we understand that completely. I work with young people. I work with young people who have tremendous athletics talents. I work with sports psychologists. And sports psychologists working with those talented individuals tell them, you cannot accomplish your goals if you cannot envision them. Truncated to, you can't do it if you can't see it. You can't do it unless you can see it. So tonight, we take a moment, 36 days away, and we take a breath, and maybe we close our eyes for a moment, and we now imagine the morning of Wednesday, November 6th. We awaken. We are weary because we've been up late. We don't have enough caffeine in our system. The dog's barking. It's maybe dawn at this point. We just ache, we're tired, and we're fuzzy because we're not exactly sure. How did everything turn out last night? Maybe it was going down to the bitter end. But we get up and we, we, we rub our eyes and we, we look out the front door and there on the driveway is something in an orange bag. What might that be? So, all right, put on my slippers. We walk out and pick up. Oh my God, it's, a, it's an honest goodness newspaper. <laughs> I haven't seen one of those in years. Why is it in the bag? I don't know, I must have read. 
So take in the newspaper, we open it up with a little trepidation, because we're just still foggy about what happened last night. And we shake it open, and we look at the banner page, and we gasp. It says, Harris wins. Flooded with emotion. Oh my gosh, it's true. It's really true. All my dreams come true. We we shake out the rest. What about what else happened last night? And we look down in alphabetical order. We say John Baker wins the Kansas. Louis Gink wins the Kansas House. And down in the very, very tiny print of now the Salina Journal, <laughs> it says, Buskirk wins the first district. The first Democrat to do this in 71 years. I know what I'm going to do that morning. After hugging my wife and giving thank yous to all my family, I've got to make 435 phone calls. The first one is to President Harris. Hope she takes my call. <laughs> President Harris, what do you need? Give us the orders. Let's go. Let's get this thing done. Then, 434 calls because there are 434 House of Representatives that I've never met and they've never met me. And for government to really become government, it means we have to be able to work together. It means that I have to get to know each one of those representatives. I need to know their journey. I need to hear from them what they perceive to be the needs of their communities. I'm hoping they would ask me about my journey. I'm hoping they would ask me about the needs of my constituents and my communities because there will be time that comes up very soon when we will need to work together. And by the way, I didn't point out that by Buskirk winning, we won the House in 2024. <laughs> In order for us to be ready on November 6th, we have to be prepared to win. And we have to think like we're going to win. And it's okay to be afraid and have anxiety. And it's okay to work our tails off in the next 36 days. But the task ahead of us the next day and beyond is gargantuan. And we need to be ready to be able to answer the call of President Harris and the future of our country. Thank you very much. Stay standing. This is just going to take just a short minute. Uh, I have an easy job tonight. My name is John Blanchard. I'm Saline County Party Chair. Uh, my job is to thank everybody. And it's the easiest job, and it's, uh, I'm grateful to be able to do it. So I want you guys all to help me thank everyone. So first, I would like to thank all of you for being here. So if you don't mind, kind of turn Here by turning to the person next to you or behind you and thank them for being here. Okay, just a, a little bit of housekeeping, but let me get through the thank yous first. Janice, would you please come up here? Help me thank And uh, all the people that helped Janice, and I'm going to try to remember everyone I need to thank. Thank you, Scott and Vicki Price, for doing the uh, voter registration. Uh, thank you to Mary Landis, the director of the temple, for keeping this place so good. in this building because there are so many wonderful people in it. 
Uh, thank you to Rodney Denham for running, helping run the elevators as well. We want to thank the Saline uh, County Democrat women for, they've done a lot of fundraising, they've ridden in parades, and they help provide the funding for the ice cream this evening. Yeah. So, and and there's, there's enough probably for everyone to take one home with you, so please do. Uh, obviously, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Janet Hansen for... And this is last, last week, so we really appreciate that. Um, obviously, I want to appreciate, or I want to thank the candidates that have worked extremely hard uh, to get out, meet people, hear what their concerns are, and we believe take that back to Topeka and to Washington, D.C., and we're going to talk about all of you. I'd like to thank Raven Gonzalez for being a great office manager. <laughs> Help me thank our uh, executive committee. Uh, as I said, I'm the chair. Sandy Beverly is the vice chair. <laughs> Carol Donald, Carol Way. Carol's our treasurer. Morris is our secretary. She's not here because she is celebrating her 52nd wedding anniversary today. <laughs> thank you for helping thank her. So um, let's just kind of turn it all the way back around again. Thank you all for being here. And that concludes the thank yous. Let me tell you what's coming up. I'm going to put my glasses on. Okay, October 1st, tomorrow night, we have Vice Presidential Debate. Uh, young Democrats are going to be hosting that. It'll be downstairs in the basement level of the building here. October 12th, canvassing, 18 to 40, 18 to 40 year old unaffiliated women. Uh, October 15th is the last day to register to vote. So talk to your neighbors, if you have neighbors or family, Get them registered to vote. Uh, the 21st of October is when early voting starts. The importance of early voting is that if you get out and vote, we don't have to make those phone calls to make sure that you're getting out to vote. So you would help the candidates out an awful lot if you would do that. Um, the, obviously, the fifth is election day. The sixth is celebration day. Um, one last thing, to all of you that have walked in parades, that have held knock, knock on doors, that, that have written, we have written a lot of postcards. 17,000. 17,000 postcards. That's a pretty good start. <laughs> yes. Um, all of this time and energy takes time and energy. It also takes money. So to those of you that have donated, thank you. To those of you that wish to donate, uh, bring it on. Uh, the, the party um, has donated quite a bit to our local candidates, and we couldn't do that if we didn't raise the funds for you. So thank you for all that you've donated to the party and to the candidates. When you leave, please leave out this way, out uh, to your left, uh, where Mary is standing. We've got a lot of uh, signs, t-shirts, swag, buttons, um, all of this. And for those of you that are on social media, if you can take pictures of tonight, or go out in the front yard, take a picture of your sign, uh, just post things on your social media because it circulates super fast that way. Um, anyway, to everyone that helped tonight, most of all, Janice, thank you guys so much. Be safe going home and enjoy the ice cream. <laughs>